Hi, I'm Charlene Tessier from Strength in Numbers, and I'm going to share with you three tips to make your next live event memorable and full of connections and building those relationships. Now, if you're using Zoom, you probably notice that there's a lot of buttons and bells and whistles, and you don't need to actually know how to do all of that or use any of those buttons to really create a great experience. You can do it with just having these, doing these three tips. The first one is creating a uh, framework and letting everybody know the social etiquette of what's going to happen here, especially at the very beginning. So what I do is I tell everybody when they come into the room, I welcome them and I say that we are going to all have our cameras on because we're going to be going into breakout rooms, we're gonna be having conversations, we're gonna be having discussions. And I would really appreciate it if you have your camera on because we're gonna be talking to each other. If you're currently very busy with something and you have to have your camera off, maybe you're doing some kind of work, then I highly recommend that you actually leave the meeting and come back when you can be present and be with us. These for discussion. Now, I've been to quite a few virtual events where they essentially say, let's do breakout rooms and then they just shove you all into breakout rooms for um, way too long first of all and they don't give any prompts essentially the prompt is introduce yourself which is the most boring kind of kind of canned thing that everybody does also it doesn't really create a space for uh, relationships just doing your canned pitch or spiel it's very nice and maybe it's great for practicing, but it doesn't really help the, get the conversation going. So I always uh, don't use that, first of all. And I start with open-ended questions, starting with easy, and I move it progressively harder throughout the event. In addition, I also sort of manage the breakout rooms as to how many people, how much time. So an example would be two people, four minutes, especially if the question's quite simple. You don't wanna leave them there too long. If they get, you know, run out of things to say, it just becomes this kind of awkward silence, right? Uh, if you have three people in the room, let's say, again, simple question, two-ish minutes each. So six minutes, maybe seven, right? Um, and you can always gauge. You can always ask. That's what I do. I send them. And then when they come back, I ask enough time, wanted a little more time. Because as the ball starts rolling, they start to warm up. And conversations start to get a little bit deeper and they do need a bit more time. And if the question's, of course, a bit more complex, then they will need anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for a group of three. What's an idea of a open-ended sort of warm, warmer up, easy question? Well, one of the questions I love to do is, what's your favorite day of the week and why? Another really great open-ended question that you can use is, What's one great thing that happened to you this week? These are all very easy for people to answer and it kind of gets the ball rolling. Some slightly harder questions that I like to ask is, what's one thing that you learned um, to apply to your business this month? So you learn something that you're going to use in your business this month. And a sort of variant on that question is, what's one thing that you learn and actually took action on and implemented in your business this month? And so I make those questions progressively harder and progressively more interesting. This allows the participants to start to realize who would actually be a good fit for partnership. They will then you know, start to organically exchange information. Hey, let's have another, let's have a chat after this um, in another time and deep dive more into each other. Because once you've got those open-ended questions that starts to build rapport and relationship and help facilitate that um, in an event, uh, people will be able to make connections much more quickly than if you kind of leave it to chance. The third tip I'm going to give you is to be present. Now, I've heard stories where people have attended events and the uh, presenter or the facilitator was like, oh, there's only three of you here. Uh, I think I'm just going to cancel it. Well, to be honest, that is not being present and, uh, and not being there for your fans. Uh, if those three people scheduled out time in their day to be there, 
then be there. Be there with them and have a conversation with them. Yes, maybe the turnout wasn't as what you uh, would have liked, but to be honest, I have learned a lot more from there being just three people in the room and having really in-depth conversations with them, spending a lot of time and listening to them and understanding where they're at than me trying to either guess or figure it out from comments in my Facebook or, or LinkedIn, you know, chat. It's just, it's actually much more difficult doing it kind of this passive way when you have these people in the room who came for you. And so be there, be present and value them. Those are my top three tips for you to be able to put on an amazing live event that's going to bring people back over and over again. Now, if you're going to run your next live event, I'd love to know. So let me know. Just hit reply to my email and tell me.